Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast, your weekly dose of knife news and information about knives and knife collecting. Here's your host, Bob the Knife Junkie DeMarco. Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast. I'm your host, Bob DeMarco. On this edition of the show, I'm speaking with Michael Miller of Tactile Knife Company. Tactile Knife started in the Texas machine shop of Tactile Turn, a limited batch high-end pen manufacturer that made its name creating some of the industry's most precisely made and robust writing instruments. Once perfecting their style of pens, they turned their attention to knives and are now running full speed to keep up with demand on their very first model, the Rockwall, which I am lucky enough to have right here. Being a bit of a closet pen fiend myself and a full-on knife junkie, I'm excited to find out how Tactile Turn spun off into Tactile Knife Company. But first, be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so that you know each time we upload a new video. And of course, share this video with other knife junkies uh, to make sure you get the, the word out. And if you want to help support the show, you can do so by going to Patreon. The quickest way to get there is by going to thenifejunkie.com slash Patreon. That's thenifejunkie.com slash Patreon. Visit The Knife Junkie at thenifejunkie.com to catch all of our podcast episodes, videos, photos, and more. Michael, welcome to the show. How you doing? Thanks for having me, Bob. I'm doing great. Oh, good. It's a pleasure to have you. So congratulations on your first, uh, on Tactile Knife's first outing uh, with the rock wall. It, it's really been received really, really well. People are clamoring for this knife. So congratulations. Thank you. It's taken a lot of lot of months worth of work, uh, hard dedication by the team that we have. Uh, every single person involved in it is the reason why we are where we are right now. So, how did you? How did this happen? How did you uh, hit such a home run with your very first knife? So, as as you said in the intro, uh, Will's known for his pins, the tactile turn pin. He's got a great eye on the industry uh, for just making something clean, classy, and minimalist. Uh, so he wanted to make a knife that he's wanted for years. Uh, so whenever he went uh, went about the design process with uh, Matt, our designer and machine programmer, this is what he came up with. Um, and it's a very minimal, sleek uh, design that gives you what you need in a form factor that is is not really seen very many times. A uh, really good comparison is a pack of gum. I don't have it with, here with me, but it's it's just a little bit a little bit longer than a pack of gum and about just as thick. Uh, so making something that's minimal doesn't take up a lot of pockets, pocket space, uh, and this that sharp, thin blade that's able to slice through cardboard like it's butter uh, is something that he's wanted for a long time, and it seems like the industry's wanting it as well. So pens, why pens? Why knives? How does uh, what, what was the birth of the tactile uh, companies in general, starting with the pens and then? And then, uh, well, I'll ask you about the knives in, in a second. But where did the, where did this desire to manufacture small batch high end pens come from? So uh, Will was making the pens out of his garage with uh, some of the original models. Uh, this is his current side click pen. I've got one in in the uh, actually no, I've got one right here with his tactile bolt pen. Um, he was he just wanted to. Wanted to make these in his garage. He ran some Kickstarter programs, uh, Kickstarter projects that were extremely successful. And be because of that success, he was able to buy more machines, uh, buy bigger uh, spaces, um, be able to work his way up as a machinist, as his machine capabilities. And he finally got to the point where Tactile Turn was big enough that he decided to branch out uh, outside of just the pin realm and, st and start uh, Tactile Knife Co. Um, me and a handful of guys were reached out to to come in at the at the ground floor of this and help get it off the ground. Uh, we currently have 12 employees that are working for the knife brand um, full time. So man, it's it's a lot of work. It's a lot of dedication. A lot of long hours. Um, like I said, this is years in the, in the making in in Will's mind and months in the making of hard work by a dedicated team. Uh, I I really applaud. Uh... You know the the way this thing came out, it's it's a it's a great first impression for anyone interested in in the kind of work you guys do. It's it's funny to me because um, this comes up time and time again on this show and other shows we do here. Uh, but 
pen pen uh, I mean uh, knife collectors, people who are into knives tend to be into some other things. Pens are one of them. Watches we were talking about before. Um, there, there's kind of a, a, a confluence with with these kind of collectibles. Uh, mm-hmm. It's kind of funny to me. Uh, so, is uh, is everyone at the at, at tactile turn? Was everyone there kind of interested in knives as well? Did it all just kind of flow in? Uh, no, we we hired some people transferred over to the knives because they were more passionate about that. Um, he's got a lot of employees with the pin side of the company. And, uh, like I said, some of them did transfer over to the knife side of things. Uh, but he also hired some people. Um, like I said, Matt, who's our, our designer and programmer for the mills. Um, he got his brother to come in and help with assembly. Uh, he had a couple friends that came in that helped them as well. We really started from the, from the ground floor and uh, learned our way to where we are now. Um, we've, we've hit issues. We've hit roadblocks blocks but we've um, pushed through them ourselves uh, we have the experience of the machinists we have the experience of knife collectors and stuff like that coming together and figuring out how to get a good action how to get um, get everything that we want uh, out of a knife sorry I'm messing with the prototype this is uh, the original um, the original prototype and it it definitely has less of an action than we're we're shipping them out with now um, but man it's been it's been a wild ride I know that um, one of the main reasons why will wanted to start tactile knife Co is because he wanted to bring um, knife making back to America um, and to um, be able to make American made knives that competed uh, price point wise and material wise craftsmanship wise uh, to some of the counterparts that are able to cut some corners that we're not able to um, because we think we can do the best that we can do and we try and put our best foot forward every single time uh, starting with the rock wall. Well, I can uh, I can attest to the action, and actually, so can uh, my wife. I've been driving her nuts with the flipping of this. It is an extremely addictive action. You'll hear people saying that about about knives. I am a, um, a half flipper guy, half thumb stud mm-hmm. guy, uh, but no matter which knife I have, it's got to have great action, and this thing has uh, excellent action. And as I mentioned uh, to you before we started rolling, I handed this to an engineer I worked with the other day because he needed a knife post haste. And uh, of course I had to razz him about not having one on him being an engineer. And uh, after he, you know, deployed it, used it, folded it back up and gave it to me. All he said was, I like this one. And, and to me from this guy, huge compliment. And um, you know, so sometimes a really well-made knife and a really excellent action can transcend uh, the knife community and, and, you know, becomes apparent and obvious to anyone. Um, Thank so, you. yeah, of course, uh, you're the community manager uh, at, mm-hmm. at Tactile Knife, uh, meaning you kind of handle uh, outreach and, and you're also sort of, uh, if you look at your IG page, you really document um, sort of the progress of the making of these knives and, and the progress of the making of the company, frankly. Um, it seems like a very, um, uh, well, I, I love the the look inside the shop kind of photographs and such. Well, a lot of brands aren't able to show that story because they're not doing it. Uh, they're not doing it in-house. They're doing, they're getting someone else to do it or they're, um, or it's outsourced and like I said we take pride in being American made knife uh, to the point where this this knife in front of me the only parts that are not made by us are the stop pin uh, and the ceramic ball bearings and the reason why we don't make the stop pin is because it is uh, extremely um, efficient to buy a stop pin in the tolerance that we need Um, and it the ceramic bearings are just something that nobody makes uh, in house, we're we're milling everything. We're we're uh, running these screws on a Swiss lathe, and uh, we're running our pivots on a Swiss lathe. We're doing every single part in house that we possibly can. Um, there's a a small, tiny, little bitty baby screw holding in the lock bar. Uh, you can barely see it, but that's made by us. 
Um, the the little details matter to us, and being able to show the production of those details, the process that those details go through, um, telling that story is important to us because we want y'all to know that this is our um, knife and that we have the ability to. Yeah, I can I can barely yeah. see a little yeah, shadow in see. there. I was uh, I've been examining this knife. I have not taken it apart, but uh, you can see that little tiny screw. Um, well, if you look in there and that's, so I love that. I love hearing that everything's made in house right at the end of the pen right there. Yeah. You can see that tiny screw. Uh, I love hearing that everything is made in house, you know, uh, who knows how to make ceramic ball bearings that small or of any size. But the, um, what I was going to ask you is what, when this change occurred, it's not a change when, when the knife company started as an outgrowth mm -hmm. of the pen company, what were some of the um, uh, unique challenges in going from very, very um, conscientiously machined pens to very, very conscientiously machined knives, which are two very different things? So one of the biggest issues is the amount of moving parts, components, and things that have to function well together with this versus this. There are less components. There are less moving parts. There, um, there is a looser tolerance to some things, and there's not as much stacking tolerance. So uh, each pivot screw screws into a pivot body. Uh, the, that pivot body uh, houses your blade. Uh, your blade is touching uh, 12 ceramic ball bearings on either side, and that's all encased with these two handles. And if all those components don't go together just right, you're not going to be able to get a strong action. You're not going to be able to get um, a smooth action if the the lock bar is not drilled perfectly, if it's not machined perfectly, if it's not cut out to our exact tolerance. You're not going to be able to get a good strong deployment. Um, so, I guess it's it's a challenge with uh, the different level of complexity uh, mm -hmm. for sure. And then as a brand, one of one of the main challenges is the marketing side of things. Um, you can't you can't Facebook ad knives, and that's that's a, a, a big difficulty um, starting off a brand. So right now, Instagram still lets us kind of brag about our stuff, so we we try and push it there. Facebook allows people to have Facebook groups, so we have a really great and lively, active Facebook group over there, um, Tactile Knife Co. And um, we, we're trying to do more grassroots marketing and kind of that that level of uh, customer appreciation, making everyone part of the family because, again, we're an American-made company who, who loves every single member that we have in our team. And if you buy our knife and if you support us, oh, we love you too, man. Uh, and we appreciate every single person that um, allows us to keep this brand going and put food on all of our tables. Uh, that's interesting. Actually, Jim, can you stop right there? Um, you can see how that uh, how the lock bar is not only yeah. screwed in, uh, but you can see how it's um, I don't know what that's called, but you can see the bulbous end and then it, it gets a little tighter and then opens back up um, key holing or something. I don't know. Yeah. Maybe, so uh, uh, let me let me talk about that. Sure. So we run our parts on a wire EDM. Uh, most companies use lasers and water jets. Those are great, but one of the benefits of using a wire EDM is that you're able to hold just bonkers, crazy tolerances. And that means that our, um, our track for our stop pin is perfect. That means that the cutout for our, our ball bearing is perfect. That means that our lock bar is cutouts to our tolerance and holds that every single time. Um, so we're, we're able to, I guess um, pull off some magic because of that one little detail. Um, that's how our insert insert locks are are such tight fitting and just fit in there like a glove. Well, what uh, you know, you you've said a couple of times that um, tactile knife is unique in that uh, in that regard. Uh, is there something about wire EDM that is more um, challenging for? For it's manufacturers slow. to use, oh. it is slow. It's expensive of a machine. It's it's not not a just. I'm going to go buy three wire EDMs, but we have three wire EDMs running all the time. Uh, it's a very slow process, but it it runs a brass wire and it conducts electricity and it basically has a arc 
uh, contacting the bla- contacting the material and taking away just a slight bit at a time. And it's um, it's definitely a really cool process to watch. I post uh, some of that up again on the on the Instagram, trying to show up uh, show um, the process, show how we're doing doing things. Um, and then yeah, we we have also have some really great mills that we're running the Dusons, uh specifically on our milled parts, and then uh, the Swiss Lays. You don't get any better than Swiss Lays. Uh, we run Citizen L twenty and a few other Swiss Lays on our um, on our floors. They're run for the pin brand as well. But man, like I said, we make our own our own hardware. Um, there's not very many brands that are able to do that, and that's because we come from a pin company that has extreme. Um, dedication and extreme knowledge of turn parts. Uh, so we were talking a minute ago about marketing. Um, yeah. It's interesting that you go from pens to knives and knives, you know, oldest tool. We mentioned that a lot. Uh, and unless you are, you know, high speed, low drag, they're not weapons, they're tools, and they're the oldest tools that people have been carrying around. And everyone, everyone's grandfather carried one in the pocket, and everyone kind of has had a knife and uses a knife on a daily basis, yet they're, they're um, demonized often. And so you mentioned that you cannot uh, advertise these knives on Facebook. You can have a group, but uh, what, what kind of... Like, how are you perceiving the difference between the pen world, not only in terms of marketing, but in terms of the customer and the knife world? So um, the knife customer is more buying the brand um, to a different level. Not that the not that our pen customers are not, but a lot of the people that are part of the knife community, it's more of that. It's more of a community. Um, so they're, they're in there from another brand. They're in there from another knife that they've owned. Um, and they're wanting to know why you're different, why you're special. Again, going to the point of showing off the process. Uh, that's one of the reasons why I think we are going back to that. We're an American made company. That's one of the reasons why I think we are going back to that. Everything's made in house. That's one of the reasons why I think we are, um, we, we try and show the high and highlight, the areas in which make us unique. And I think that that's, that's what makes people want to support us. Um, not that this is not a great product. I, we stand behind this a hundred thousand percent. This is, I think an amazing product and I can't wait to see what the future holds for us as a brand. Uh, I love, love the rock wall. And I think that it is such a, such a great design in this industry. Um, it's such a unique design in its form factor. Um, man, one of the, one of the, one of the things that everybody wants right now is a deep carry pocket clip. And I think that we executed that in a way that hasn't been seen before. Um, if, if you pull up the, on the website, you can see the blueprint and you see that our, our pocket clip actually nests inside of this backspacer. It's got a cutout, uh, that it fits in there perfectly. Again, the, the benefits of u- utilizing both a wire EDM and, uh, really great mills means that we have a great tolerance on this pocket clip. Um, so you can see on there, the pocket clip, uh, you can't see the backside of the, of the, um, of the backspacer, but it has that exact cutout, that exact mm-hmm. shape so that it fits and nests in there perfectly. Um, I wish I had one here here on hand. I know I've got some of the pivots and stuff like that, but um, yeah, it's we we went about trying to somewhat reinvent the wheel, but do it the way that we wanted to, and that we've wanted to see it be done uh, for a long time. Um, one of the things that a lot of people like also is uh, is coming from our pin brand. Our customers appreciate the brand cohesiveness that we've. Uh, kind of achieved from the texture. Uh, you probably can't see it on this on webcam, but there's a really fine texture on all of our tactile turn pins, uh, and we've brought that texture over uh, a little bit more beefy of a texture on sure. the knife, but it has that same feel, that same kind of a um, f- minimal file, but but still, it, it doesn't it doesn't hurt or anything, but you feel more grip than if it if it wasn't there. 
Yeah, it's uh, the texture. I was I was going to say this. The texture is more necessary on the knife because of the nature of the tool itself. Uh, yeah. So you can see how it's kind of a blown up version. It's a different uh, uh, from from what I've seen of your of the pens. It's a different pattern, but but you can see the attention to the milling and the and the detail in that. Um, and and rightly so, it's scaled up on the knife. So that while you're using it, you have good purchase on it. I think you hit on something pretty uh, interesting and important about the knife community. And that is uh, that knife collectors, um, well, they like the bragging rights that come with getting a knife um, uh, that a lot of attention has been paid to it. You know, in the not not only in the design, which is obvious, but also in the manufacturing of it. The texture on this, I'm just going to hold this up to the knife cam. But the texture on this is very, very fine yeah. and, and just, you know, and, and it's in your name, <laughs> you know, uh, it's really, really beautifully done. And you can see how uh, it's pocketed out there to reduce weight on the, uh, you know, underneath the slabs here. And um, so this, I, I assume, is a signature, uh, the texture. Yeah, like I said, it, it comes from from our pens that we we make. Uh, they have always had this, or the earliest few runs didn't, but over the last few years, they've always had this textured feel to it. And uh, we we wanted to bring that over whenever we started this brand. Uh, so this model, the next model that we have uh, prototyping currently, it's going to have that same textured feel. Uh, we'll talk about the uh, the new one in a minute. Yeah. But we're, so were you surprised by... Um by how um by the reception that you received from the knife community and 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 the demand uh so we we knew that we had something uh whenever we had it prototyped uh so like i said this is the first prototype i brought it to the california custom knife show it was uh hand ground the night before um it was put together that night sharpened by will and was in um, one of our employees' mailboxes for me to pick up on the way to the airport, um, just in time to bring it to a knife show and show it off to, I guess, uh, the collectors of the of the world. But um, it was we knew that we had something there. We've I've I've been in this industry for for years. Will's been in this industry longer than I have. Um, like I said, we, Matt, our our designer, um, has designed knives before uh, and we we knew we had a great strong design and uh we knew from tactile as a brand we had demand um we also had demand outside of tactile just because this was again telling that story and showing that we're an american-made knife trying to compete uh with oh, in a world market full of different price points full of different material options and um i think that we have have something that goes toe to toe with uh, any knife that's out there uh, in the three hundred dollar price point, and so that's that's the retail. By the way, um, mm -hmm. is two ninety nine. Uh, but yeah, we really love we really love our knife. We love um, the execution of it, and we knew that we would have something good. Um, and I, I'm glad that we, we. It looks like we hit the nail right on the head. So, how did you select the materials? The titanium is kind of an obvious choice, but CTS XHP is one of my favorite steels, and I was thrilled to see it in use on this uh, knife. How was that chosen? So, Will was doing a lot of research, looking at just the variety of steels and what what he could get uh, as far as availability and what he um, what he could work with uh, with what we have set up. And uh, XHP was a pretty clear winner. Um, it's got great edge retention, great corrosion resistance. Uh, we are also uh, trying or looking at trying to also offer 20 CV as an option. Uh, I don't know if, if that's going to happen uh, right now or it, when at what point that will be an option, uh, but we do hope to have that in the near future. Um, that's a basically an M390 equivalent for those that aren't aware. Um, 
And then, yeah, we we obviously will work with some more fancier steels as well. But XHP is really just a great classic. Um, brands like Microtech have have used XHP on many of their their switch blades. That's one of the rotating uh, steels that they'll go with based on their supply. Um, yeah, so we knew that it was a good good steel. I've had a lot of custom knives with XHP, and Will's um, always always thought it was a good overall balanced steel as well. Um. Uh, the uh, the rock wall, by the way, since we're talking about steels, yeah. is begging for a um, Damascus treatment. You know, a small run of Damascus blades would look gorgeous on that knife, uh, especially with the with the um, the milling in the handle and just you know the the regimented nature of the whole design. And then you add um, you add some sort of crazy Damascus. It would look beautiful on that knife. We did make a knife with zirconium handles. Um, unfortunately, there were some machining issues, just the machining differences between titanium and zirconium. We're going to fine-tune that eventually. Right now, we're just not offering that um, to the public. Um, we're not even offering it to anybody. We're just not making them. But uh, at some point, we will do zirconium handles. Uh, we'll do... Um, We'll do Damascus blades. We'll do different finish blades. Hopefully, hand rub satin finish stuff like that. We we do plan on having um, options on on these knives, different materials for the back spacers, uh, Damascus steel, um, pocket clips, stuff like that. I know we have some Timascus pocket clips. We have done some Damascus steel pocket clips as well. So we'll we'll embellish this thing. There will be variants. Right now, like you said. Um, we we're not hitting our demand right now. We currently have a waiting list of uh, 1,700 emails, and um, we've only made it only made it 750 through. Uh, so we've got a thousand people that have signed up with their email saying that they want to buy one. That we will give a chance to buy them before we just open the gates up and start selling them on our website. Uh, before we start trying to contact dealers before we start trying to offer different versions and finishes and stuff. Um, we might offer some uh, sprint run for Blade Show just just for snuggles and grins. Um, but that's that's gonna be pretty much the the run of it as far as like the rock walls. We're gonna we're gonna run through this wait list. Yeah, that's what I'm getting at actually. The rock yeah. wall is a perfect canvas, perfect platform for endless uh, you know, variations and sprint runs. And, you know, I, I, it's, uh, you know, like the Sabenza or the PM two or something like that, you know, it's got that classic, you know, this is not a knife. I, I don't think that this is a knife that is, uh, prone too much to, to the whims of style. You know what I mean? Sometimes like you can tell with some knives that, that, that are born out of, uh, a, a current trend. This one kind of seems to be outside of that, which uh, yeah, I think so, will give it legs. Yeah, like I said, definitely coming from the pin background, mm. uh, trying to hit a timeless classic look um, was was one of Will's uh, biggest check marks, and I think that I think that this executed it really well. Um, yes, sir. Yeah. So uh, tell me about the pace of production. Uh, you're, sure. you're, you're talking about it. You have a 1700 deep uh, waiting list. Congratulations. That's awesome. Uh, you've gotten through, uh, you know, a fraction of those. How, how, what's it like in the shop? What's the, are people um, like at, at once, like I was, I mentioned before, you see some production pictures and, and some quick production videos on your Instagram page. And to me, you get this feeling of like, of, of, um, you know, being in a, in a, um, master workshop and and it doesn't seem like a, a hectic place from how you depict it but it must be so tell me yeah. tell me what the pace of production is like so right now uh we have a bottleneck with blades uh we were trying to do some blade steel um heat treat was not able to get it to the hardness that we needed mm. um so we're in the middle of trying to um, get through this this leaner time uh, of blades, but once we get through that, yeah, we we definitely have our processes as oiled as we can uh, for being a brand of our our age. Um, for those that aren't aware, we started uh, the process of turning this from a 3D printed prototype to what it is now in September of last year. So we've not even hit a one year mark, and we're having. Um, 
we have a team of five people in finishing and assembly. Uh, they they definitely stay slammed, trying to to make as many knives as they can in a week. We have a dedicated uh, two two individuals that deal with all the surface grinding and wire EDMing. Uh, those two individuals stay busy all the time. We have two individuals that are run, or three individuals that are running the mills. Um, and they, again, are staying busy all the time. We've got everyone this, from grinding to all the other steps of the process. Um, we definitely, we've got a team full of people that are constantly, uh, constantly working. And um, we're currently able to make about uh, 50 to 60 knives a week. Um, hopefully we can make those numbers, numbers higher soon uh, just to be able to get more of them out there because the demand definitely is there. So when you are such a young knife company, uh, such as yourself, and your and your biggest bottleneck is the blades, how do you approach the sharpening? Um, to me, you know, I've ruined plenty of blades, um, you know, uh, jacking them up, uh, ones that either that I've made or ones that I've tried to sharpen on a machine. Yeah. Um, that seems to me to be, boy, the biggest white knuckling aspect of uh getting through the process did how does that work how did how did you how do you do that will actually taught himself how to sharpen so for those that don't know will hodges is the owner of tactile knife co uh he's the guy who had the idea for this thing to even come into existence so he taught himself how to sharpen a knife um he then uh transferred that skill over to our assembly manager mike um and mike has ruined a hundred scrap blades but they were already scrapped to begin with uh getting his technique down getting his um execution of it down and for those that haven't seen one uh these are great edges we oh yeah we are extremely proud of them they are extremely sharp um we're trying to achieve a sharpness out of the box that isn't isn't standard very even very even edge on this knife was one of the first things i noticed because um, that's not always the case, even in, in some of the most, uh, um, you know, enduring companies or, or, or uh, longstanding companies. Uh, but for a new company, that was actually one of the first things I checked out was how does the Spider- edge look from Spiderco front Spiderco uses a robot to machine uh, to, to <laughs> sharpen their PM2s. Really? Yeah. Well, your robot works great, and I, I hear he's a flesh robot, so nicely yeah. done. Yeah, he's cut himself once or twice. Uh, but I'll definitely pass on the compliment. He'll be happy to hear it. So uh, with the pocket clip now, uh, yeah. the first thing that I noticed, or you mentioned um, it's deep carry, and, and yeah, it's a, it's a really nice pocket clip, but it looks like something that was carried over from the pen design sensibility. And that uh, actually, I'm not sure if this was a consideration, but... When it comes to, say, working in an office where they might be knife sensitive, yeah. this clip is a very, um, well, it's a, it's a very subtle kind of design that you can have in your pants pocket or in your shirt pocket. This, night is, this knife is light enough to kind of just put in a shirt pocket, and uh, it's not going to raise a lot of attention. Like I said, it's that stick of gum profile, so it, it's not, um, it's a subtle look. It's uh, you're going to have very minimal showing out of your pants pocket and uh, being able to not display that I have a knife, I have a knife, I have a knife versus like some of my favorite knife brands. uh, You've got this much of the knife sticking out of your pocket and it's clear as day what you have. Uh, Also, like there's there's places where just as a community knives aren't as accepted. Um, So we, we went for a subtle, clean look that um again gives you a deep carry pocket clip option um and is able to be unique uh it follows the lines of the of the knife i think it i think it makes it look good instead of just being like we had to put a pocket clip here this is what it looks like right it definitely does not look off the shelf and you mentioned there are some communities where knives are not accepted or acceptable uh, crazy as that sounds to most of us uh so that that brings me to the model that you were discussing something that you have in the offing uh tell me a bit about that so right now we're working on a slip joint uh profile uh it's going to be pretty pretty awesome it's it's going to have the same texturing i don't have a set of the prototype handles i've posted a picture of it on instagram i know um 
but we're going to offer it with a couple different blade variations. One of which I'm I'm pretty excited about. It's got a uh, a very short blade, little stubby little stubby guy. Uh, but then on the back third, it's got a bottle opener, um, and we we made sure that it was it was clean and classy. Uh, it's it does not look like a tacky gimmicky bottle opener whenever whenever it's shut, but whenever you open it up. You've got the ability to pop open your favorite brew or Topo Chico or Juritos or whatever whatever it is that you're drinking. And we made sure that whenever you're opening up the bottle that this is what the pop point. Uh, you don't have to go down or vertical to try and slice your hand or anything like that. Um, so it, we're, we're excited. It's, it's, a, it's a fun project that's also going to be um, our most economically affordable option as well. Um, we're we're not 100% dialed in with the price point uh but it should be sub $200. Uh do do you think uh, at least from your perspective uh is it a more simple thing to make a slip joint than say the the complex nature of the of the rock wall? So it it's a simpler um design to make there is uh because just complexity of components there are less components on a slip joint um but it is a much more difficult, in my opinion, uh, design to perfect before production. Uh, Matt, our designer, has spent the last few months uh, going over figuring out exactly how much preload he needs on the on the um, on the lock bar um, on on the spring. I'm sorry, um, back spring, and where the spring should pivot, what thickness the spring needs to be, what. Uh, steels with what hardnesses are going to give us that good walk and talk because we don't want anything that's just um, man there's some of the slip joints that are out there just have some of the worst actions it feels like you're just why it, did you just throw this together kind of kind of feeling and we want it to be clear that this is precisionly thought out that every single one has this great walk and talk action that you know where your half stop is it's very strong and and clear that that's what it is once it clicks open it's got that nice whack whenever it does um it's obviously going to feel different than a flipper but it's it's definitely going to be something fun something enjoyable uh extremely thin extremely light uh very again um inside your pocket option uh, we're we're looking at possibly doing a lanyard hole, uh, but it's going to be very minimal and very clean. I'll say it: uh, the Benchmade proper, I think, describes that kind of uh, action. You're, and I have one, and I like it. Uh, but but man, what a disappointment in the action! And it does matter. It's a part of the experience. Yes, it it doesn't really help you cut. You know, the walk and talk doesn't really help you cut. It does help the knife stay open if you have good walk and talk. You know that 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 back spring is going to, uh, you know, is going to hold you in good stead. Uh, but, but man, it, it, it is part of the experience and it can be ruined by a sloppy walk and talk. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we, we, we definitely, we've got it dialed in. I got to handle, um, the last prototype on Tuesday. Um, I went into the shop and man, it was dialed in perfect. I'd love to have that knife, uh, we're currently working on the hardware for it. So again, like like our like our rock wall, um, all the hardware is going to be made in house. So they're working on trying to fast track pivots and fast uh, track screws. We're going to hopefully have some of those available for Blade Show. Um, is our is our fingers crossed? And you're a um, you, we were talking before we started rolling. You're a um, slip joint guy collector. I mean, of the highest order. Yeah, I, I definitely, I've got a couple of custom slip joints. Um, my first knife I've actually got right here um, was a Case Stockman, uh, Case Double X Stockman. Uh, I was given whenever I was five years old. I've cut myself many times with this thing, but I spent countless days and hours at flea markets um, in the back of knife traders' trucks or at, in their, um, where, where they were set up, handling all these Case Double X, all these. Um, all these I brands, Hoffritz, all these uh, shoot bulldogs, some of just the American classic slip joints, and then whenever I got into custom knives, I obviously went into custom slip joints as well with people like Enrique Pinay and um, Jared Ozier, and I have a great, great respect and uh, great appreciation for that for that craft. 
I've had dinner with Tony Bowes, definitely one of the most iconic slip joint makers and designers in American history. Well, I mean, I think it's a, it's a real benefit that, uh, tactile has you as a um as a slip joint connoisseur uh on board while this uh is is in in the creation and prototyping form uh somewhat but man matt is you can't you can't get knock the team the team of matt who does the uh does the designing tim's dedicated so much time in making all the prototype back spring uh back springs to to test them out a lot of them just have snapped and failed and just been thrown in the trash we've we've thrown away a lot of time money and uh, materials just trying to get this this prototype to where it is now and we're really happy that it is where it is so is this going to be um a slip joint in the modern um paradigm where you can unscrew it take it apart um and maintain it that way it will be a screwed um screwed assembly uh we also do plan on doing sprint runs of different materials uh but mostly in titanium um and i think we're i think we're running 20 cv on the first round of blades that we're going to be making for the slip joint nice so um, you mentioned blade show yeah no please i've got one more prototype i want to i want to bounce real oh, quick yeah. as well uh so we're gonna also be making some chef knives in the very near future so they're in the process of the design, the, the design aspect of that, but it's also going to be faster from design to full production uh, compared to the rock wall and the slip joint as well. Seeing as they're as they're fixed by nature, so exactly. I mean that 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 seems to bring, uh, especially when you're talking about blades and how blades can present the um, the bottleneck in the process. Uh, yes, fixed blades are simple, but uh, but chef's knives or kitchen knives or um, have very, very thinly ground blades. I could mm -hmm. see that presenting a whole other challenge. Is that something you're getting? Um, is that something you're hearing from your design team? Yeah, it, it will. It will have challenges. We're ready to face it head on. Uh, mm -hmm. We've got, like I said, a, a great team that's going to be able to solve the problems that they that they encounter. Um, we've got great confidence in them. Um, I, me being one of them, I, I definitely plan on chopping up as much as much stuff in the kitchen as I can, uh, putting it through the ringer before we go to market. So uh, with with the chef's knives and um, and the slip joints, are you thinking about um, different handle materials? I know for the for the slip joint, you said mostly titanium, but say let's talk about the chef's knives exclusively. Are they going to have titanium handles? Are you going to be branching out into more? Uh, traditionally kitchen knife style handles? So uh, our current machine capacity, we do not have a machine in-house that we want to run uh, those non-metal materials mm -hmm. on. Uh, that's not saying that we won't get one of those machines soon because that is definitely something that's on the table that we've talked about. Uh, but in the meantime, they will be titanium um, for the foreseeable future to my knowledge. That's cool because um, there used to be uh, these very um, trendy kitchen knives, and I haven't seen them in a while. Do you remember Global Knives? Not they off had the top these of my head. very weird handles. Uh, they had almost triangular handles uh, that were um, much fatter towards the Ricasso, and they mm -hmm. had a little finger groove, but then they tapered off into a real um, a thin tail end. And I always thought they looked really cool. And some friends of mine, this was kind of like early 2000s, I'd say. Some friends of mine had some. And I was so excited to use them. I used to go to their house and we would cook. And uh, I remember the first time I tried them. These are the Global Chef's Knives. I was like, oh, man, these are lookers, but they are not good <laughs> in the hand. And I'm wondering, or at least not in my hand. And I'm wondering if that's why I never see Global uh global chef's knives anymore uh but one thing that i really liked about them was that they were all metal and they had yeah. that metal handle and it was very you know pleasing and i and i can it, you know you might say well metal handle on a chef's knife could be dangerous because your hands are most definitely getting wet and touching uh material you know touching food stuff and getting slippery but with your milling expertise i could see how um you know you could really make that work and be unique. As long as we put enough texture, as long as we put enough grip, uh, that is that is something that we are aware of. Um, 
yeah, we're, we're definitely excited to face that head on um, and look forward to hopefully having, again, some of those prototypes at Blade Show. Oh, that would be awesome. I, I really like the idea of a metal handled chef's knife, especially with all that texturing. Uh, so Blade Show, you are going to Blade Show. Tell uh, yes, tell sir. us what, uh, uh, are you going to have a table there? Tell us what we your involvement is. We have 26 and 27. Uh, those are going to be in the back middle, back uh, middle right uh, of the of Blade Show if up against the back wall. Um, so we're going to have two booths right next to each other. One's going to be the pins. One's going to be the knives. Oh, that's exciting. Yeah, definitely. Uh, if y'all do attend Blade Show, uh, come by, say hi to us, let us know that you heard us from the podcast. We appreciate it. So uh, seeing as there is a waiting list for the rock wall, um, what kind of things can people expect at the tactile knife booth? So we, we hope to have a few sprint run uh, rock walls available. Um, not very many at all, because we're again, focusing on the wait list, but we do plan on having the next model, which is the bear, uh, the slip joint available at the show and possibly some chef knives as well. Um, if you don't mind real quick, I wanted to talk about the, the knife names that we've come up with. Yeah, uh, yeah. We do plan on trying to stick with this um, in the future as well, but each knife is named after a county in Texas. Um, so the rock wall is rock wall County. It's actually like five minutes away from our shop in Garland, Texas. And, um, it's the smallest County in Texas as well. So being our first knife, it's kind of just the beginning, I guess, is what, why we chose rock wall for it as a name. And then, uh, bear County is Austin, um, Austin, Texas. It's the County that it's, it sits in and, uh, being a slip joint, we just thought it was a really cool kind of nod to the to the more historical side of a slip joints nature as well. I love that. I love the idea of naming them after counties. Uh, do you have a name set for the chef's knife yet? Uh, not yet. Okay. All right. Well, um, yeah, I'm sure you have a number of counties to choose from. I, I'm not sure what Texas what they ain't, all are, ain't but... the smallest state. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that's a that's a big point of pride for you guys. Uh, not just that you're USA made, but that you're Texas made. Yes, sir. I'm I'm Texas born and bred. Uh, yeah, it's it's definitely a, a thing of pride. If you if you meet someone from Texas and they ain't told you that from Texas, then they probably weren't there for very long, um, or they moved there for weren't born there. Uh, Texas made Texas uh, proud is definitely something that we're we're proud of. Uh, you, you can see it even on our packaging. Uh, yeah. It says probably probably designed, um, machined, and assembled in Texas. Uh, yeah, we've we take great pride in that for sure. Uh, let me take a quick minute. I, I know uh, before we started rolling, you said that this will uh, change with time, but uh, I just want to show off the beautiful packaging uh, that this that this came in. Uh, you've got this sleeve with your logo on it, and then it's this beautifully milled out uh, pocket there with the magnets. Uh, how important is um, packaging i mean it looks like it's quite important is this a carryover from from the pen uh pen venture as well um somewhat but just presentation as you know is you only have one first impression so if you buy a knife and you spend a good amount of money on it it needs to be presented well um so the the micarta box that yours was shipped in is going to change um, if you get on the waiting list now, it's going to come in a foam packaging, but that was specifically cut out and made for our knife. Uh, so you will still have the, um, the paper, um, paper sleeve and a metal COA card that we've been doing that has who it was assembled by, who, it, uh, the date that it was assembled and, um, shoot some specifics on the knife, like the Stills. Rockwell numbers, the materials, uh, stuff like that as well. So we, we do plan on having a, a presentation that I do think is deserving of our knife um, and hopefully gives a great first impression whenever whenever somebody buys one. Yeah, I mean, I think it's um, I mean, that's I've never seen anything like this for sure uh, milled out of that rich light. But uh, also, even when I receive a knife, uh, I just got one recently and I can't remember which one because, well, you know, they seem to come in pretty quickly here. But um even when I see like a foam, nice foam uh, 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 carry uh, foam box where, where it's milled and it fits the contours of the blade and it just fits in there. I love that because 
it's not just attention to detail in the knife. It's attention to how it, how it gets to you. Like you said, the presentation, what your first impression is, but also in, in how it's protected. Uh, there's something yeah. about that. That's, that's so uh, little known fact, uh, the paper sleeves and the foam are actually again, made in Dallas, uh, which, which is 20 minutes from our shop. So I got to go there and see in person them putting together and making these foil stamping the, the artwork on there, um, assembling them, getting them ready for our knives. So, um, we, we support as much as we can, if we're not doing it ourselves in house, we yeah. want to support people that are doing that as well. Uh, so again, we we want American machinery, American craftsmanship to be number one. We want to be able to also offer an affordable price tag, um, and try and having that balance is a is a challenge, but it's something that we're we're definitely wanting to face. And keeping it in text, well, you're you're. Um... You're, you have a lot of new Texans, and I bet that that flow is going to continue. So who knows what kind of industry might might come in that, that uh, well, in any case, I'll, I'll drop that right there. But, yeah, yeah Texas, beautiful state, and uh, uh, the people there, it, the Texans I've met in my day, um, yeah, it, it makes me a little bit envious. Not envious, jealous. Uh, so the future of tactile, tactile knife um, – if you have your druthers, how do you want the company to grow? What do you want it to be in, say, 10 years? So um, we currently have a shop. I think it's 12,000 square feet. Um, it's a rather large shop. We've got mm -hmm. uh, three Swiss Lays. We've got another one coming. We've got multiple CNC machines. We have our three wire EDMs. Uh, we've got a bunch of other Lays that are, that are running as well. Uh, we've currently... Uh, we are currently in the process of moving here in the next few months to a space that has the ability to expand up to 40,000 square feet. Wow. So we do plan on uh, growing as much as we can. Um, part of that is different product lines uh, of the different models. Part of that is uh, trying to offer the best, best product at the best price that we can so that the demand is there. Um, and obviously great design so that the demand is there as well so that we can have more people working for us. We can have more things running, more um, more products going out the door and the ability to grow this into um, a formidable uh, brand in this industry. We do not plan on trying to be the, the little sheep in the corner. We want to be the, the big dog on the block. Um, I'm not, I'm not saying we're going to be there in five years, 10 years, but our goal is always to grow. Our grow goal is to do the best possible. And that's what we're trying to do at the same time. Uh, to me, it's very exciting. I know, I know to a lot of people, the idea of, of, uh, you know, more and more and more American knife companies, but also making, making their knives here, making everything about, you know, every component of their knives here and, and uh, keeping it here is uh, exciting to a lot of people. And um, yeah, well, we we're excited to see you growing um, and, you know, becoming the, uh, a big contender in the future. Uh, but for now, tell people how they can, uh, again, tell people how they can get into, you know, behind the wheel of a rock wall and uh, what the best way to follow you and to, always know what's going on and being aware of drops, etc. Yeah, so we always post on Instagram. Uh, we have a Facebook group, uh, Tactile Knife Co. Uh, just go ahead and join there. Uh, we, we'd we be happy to have you there. It's got uh, right at under a thousand members, um, but it's a great community of, of collectors and of uh, just friends in the industry. Um, we also are going to keep this waiting list going for a while for the rock wall. So sign up on the website, tactile knife.co, not.com. Um, just sign up there and you can reserve your place in line. Um, it's the same price. You don't have to do money down or anything like that. You're just saying, I'd like to buy one. Um, if something comes up, I know it's a four week window once your email is activated for you to be able to buy it. So you should hopefully be able to fit it in your schedule. Um, we'll hopefully do a waiting list for the, for the future models as well. So, uh, again, follow us on Instagram, follow us on Facebook, and we look forward to, um, hopefully getting a Texas made knife in your pocket in the fastest time possible. Awesome. Well, incidentally, if you accidentally put 
dot com in there. It still redirects to dot co, awesome. uh, which is a which is a good thing to know. And uh, Michael, I look forward to shaking your hand at Blade Show. This will be my first year going to Blade. And uh, I'm really looking forward to. Uh, it's going to be chaos in case you're uh, unaware. <laughs> I know. I look forward to to checking out your table. And uh, not for nothing, I do have to get a, uh, I do have to get a tactile turn pen as well. Yeah. They're so. I've been stalking them. Real quick, also, we do plan yeah. on going to multiple other shows. Uh, okay. Hopefully, Blade West um california custom knife show stuff like that so mm -hmm. stay tuned for, the, for again our instagram if we can come to a knife show in your area we're going to try to uh hopefully you could handle one before you bit the bullet and purchased it well excellent michael miller of tactile knife company thank you so much for joining us here on the knife junkie podcast i've been loving showing off my rock wall and and uh building up a, a little bit of jealousy in in the viewers and and such and uh it's been a pleasure meeting and, and learning about the company thanks for having me bob i sure appreciate it pleasure the Get Upside app is your way to get cash back on your gas purchases. Get Upside is an app you put on your smartphone, and whenever you need to get gas, search your area for savings, claim your discount, fill up your tank, and then take a picture of the receipt with your phone. And that's it. You've just got cash back. Visit theknifejunkie.com forward slash save on gas to get the app and start saving. Again, that's theknifejunkie.com slash save on gas. There he goes, Michael Miller of Tactile Knife Company, a very exciting new venture, and uh, I'm thrilled and honored to have this rock wall, and I know a lot of you have been asking about it, so uh, so get on that list. It's definitely, definitely worth the wait. Well, that does it for this edition of the Knife Junkie Podcast. Thank you so much for tuning in. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and uh, also check us out on the podcatchers, and um be sure to check out our other content. We have some close-up knife videos. We have the midweek supplemental podcast. And, of course, uh, the Thursday night live stream, Thursday Night Knives, which is always a, uh, a vivacious uh, environment where you can get come on the show and we can just talk knives late at night on Thursday, 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. All right. Well, that does it for me. Uh, thank you, Jim, working his magic behind the switcher. And uh, I'm Bob DeMarco saying, don't take dull for an answer. Thanks for listening to the Knife Junkie Podcast. If you enjoyed the show, please rate and review at reviewthepodcast.com. For show notes for today's episode, additional resources, and to listen to past episodes, visit our website, theknifejunkie.com. You can also watch our latest videos on YouTube at theknifejunkie.com slash YouTube. Check out some great knife photos on theknifejunkie.com slash Instagram, and join our Facebook group at theknifejunkie.com slash Facebook. And if you have a question or comment, email them to Bob at thenifejunkie.com or call our 24-7 listener line at 724-466-4487 and you may hear your comment or question answered on an upcoming episode of the Knife Junkie Podcast. Mm -hmm.